Welcome to the 2021 Feast of Tabernacles on Kentucky Lake here at the Moores Resort. I'm about ready to tear up. I, I cannot express in words how awesome this moment is. Um, because, you know, last year we didn't have a feast here locally. We couldn't. Everything was under lockdown. We tried doing one online, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. And it's not the same as this. You know, opening night, Feast of Tabernacles. And speaking of, of you know, we're supposed to be a gully washer today and tonight. It's supposed to pour. So I said last night I saw the, full, uh, the almost full moon coming up over the lake, and I said to Eric and everybody after we get dinner, I said, go take a picture of it now because tomorrow we won't be able to see the full moon come up over the lake. Remember that? And uh, God's going to bless us. God willing, yeah, we get out of here. You look uh, that, yeah, yonder that way. And it should be coming up over the lake and the uh, uh, moonlight shimmering off the water. It's uh, be just, I can't believe it's here. Because we worked so hard to be able to uh, put this together. And it's just, uh, it's amazing. You know, when Kevin Kennedy talked me into this. I'll go into that in a minute. And I really wanted to call us the fly by the seat of our pants feast. Because I knew we were going to have to just make adjustments and be flexible and deal with whatever happens. And if we get 100 more people or more, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> There's patio furniture out there. We've got folding chairs, camp chairs. We'll make it work. And we could just cram 30 people to a couch, right? Back there. <laughs> Trish Farley's back there with Caroline Blunch. And they're like, they're enjoying this. We got couches. Yeah. It's going to be great. You have complaints called skip. Mark. Yeah, that's true. If you have any complaints, on the website. yes, if you have any problems or complaints, I'm going to put the Skip Martin's cell phone number up there. <laughs> Call Skip. He'll, he'll love it. He'll love it. He, you know, we're already, he already loves me, and so we'll just uh, do that for him. We should just play a practical joke on him this piece and just do that. That's right. Right. You know, things we don't always recognize or understand the reasons and the purposes that God directs our steps in the way that he does. Sometimes Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 comes to calling and our ability to adapt and overcome time and circumstances is necessary. I didn't read the quote because uh, I've read it so many times I figured at least most of the folks will get an idea what I'm talking about. It's through time and circumstances. And uh, that's Ecclesiastes 9-11. So first of all, the most important thing to remember, this is God's feast. Okay? It's not, you know, Michael Deering's feast or the LBL feast or the Deering feast or the Fellowship of the Word feast. You know, that tends to happen. You, know, you hear people talking, are you going to be over at uh, uh, Jim O'Brien's feast or uh, Ray Wooten's feast and all those types of things. This is God's feast, not our feast. Because when you read in Leviticus 23, our God says, these are my feasts, my appointed times. These are his moeds, his sacred assemblies. He commands us to appear before him and rejoice these eight days at his Feast of Tabernacles. And so we, here we are. And this isn't in my notes, but I was talking to somebody that's not in the church and that works with the management up there and was asking, okay, this feast you're having and explaining it. And uh, I don't think it was my wife saying, you know, that the friends of my kids used to say, oh, how, you don't get Christmas? Oh, what a, that's so unfortunate. You guys are missing out. And they missing out. We, we've got the Feast of Tabernacles like it was eight days. <laughs> you know, because God commands us to appear before him and rejoice. Now, we just came through the uh, uh, Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement where our high priest, Jesus the Messiah, did all the work. The, the entire assembly sat outside the camp, and the high priest does everything. He's the one that goes into the Holy of Holies and cleanses it with, with, with the blood of the bullock and, and the goat. You know, he's the one that does everything to make atonement or at one minute with the entire people, all the congregation of Israel. The high priest does that, which we know is a symbol of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He did everything. And then after that, the Most High says, Now you will appear before me for eight days and you will rejoice with the blessings that I have given you and enjoy. He wants us in modern nomenclature, so I want you to come before me and party before me. 
I want to party. I want you guys to enjoy the blessing. I want to see you rejoice. What father doesn't want to see his kids having a great time? You know, I, I always certainly like to see my kids. You know, Dad says you will be here for the picnic, okay? So you're going to be here. And that, that's what our father's doing here today. Um, our desire is to encourage each one of you to walk better in your relationship with our Messiah and to encourage other people around you. Um, that should be our motivating pr uh, principle this week. As we, you know, because when you think about it, as we fellowship with one another, we're also fellowshipping in the Spirit with Jesus Christ and the Father. So as we're talking, we're conversing with God, Jesus said, but two or three are gathered. I'm in, the, I'm in the midst. So as we fellowship there, we're, we're having this relationship that we're building with one another, but at the same time we're doing that, we're building our relationship with Abba Father and Jesus Christ. And that's an amazing thing when you consider that, and I'm astounded by it as I grow more, uh, into more understanding. And many people here are faced with and going through a lot of serious trials right now. Some of them are even going to be severe tests of faith and strength. You know, there are jobs and there are careers that are on the line. There are even lives that are on the line. So let's encourage one another, build one another up, sharpen one another up this week. And uh, it, it's going to be one of the things I really want to kind of focus on for everybody. So that we can be lights in a, in, a, in a darkening world. That's our desire for each one of you. That this feast would be the best one you have ever had and that you've ever enjoyed. Because you're all being spiritually fed of the blessing of fellowship we've been gifted to have this year. That I was deprived, some of I was deprived last year. Uh, let's give Abba Yah, our Father in Heaven, our great Elohim, thanks for this blessing of allowing us to meet here together at this feast. Because to be here right now, this week, is a blessing that we cannot give our father and our elder brother adequate thanks for. Brethren, whether you recognize it or not, we desperately needed this feast to happen for all of us. I know I needed it for me. Because I kind of discern that it will likely possibly be the most important feast you've ever kept in your life. Of the 33, three, the 33 feasts of tabernacles that I've kept, this one will likely be the most important that I've kept. And I mean, why are you saying that? When you take a look at what's happening out there right now, when you consider the abject evil and lawlessness that has engulfed this world in our country, when you see the corruption and evil running everything, the cultural suicide and the civic destruction uh, of this people, it's becoming self-evident to those of us who are on the wall watching. The judgment is being pronounced. That we are living the curses of Deuteronomy 28. When you read and hear leaders in high positions advocating the imprisonment, punishment, and death of those whom they disagree with, declaring them to be terrorists and intolerant insurrectionists, it does not take a prophet to understand where all of this leads in the short term. A common denominator of those whom the ruling class so clearly despise are those who hold to and keep the laws of God. You're the target. I'm the target. Biblical morality is the target. Look out there, you've seen it. When men make themselves God through government, when they render themselves untouchable and unaccountable, doing as they please without any concern of whom they harm, while imposing evil by force and by color of law and decree, the worst lessons of human history are unleashed on a people. We need this feast. We need it so that in the difficult days ahead, we can look back on this week that's coming up. And we can draw strength from what we're going to be experiencing here together in our rejoicing before the Lord. God is giving us this space at this time, this respite. Before things really do get tough out there and difficult for us. We have this opportunity to build bonds of friendship in this body of Christ. That can be solidified and strengthened. And no power of men on earth can contend with that. They'll hate it. But so what? Let them hate it. Let them hate it. For us to know that without question that he is going to bring his justice. His righteousness is coming. That his kingdom will be everlasting. And that all of his enemies, which are also all of our enemies, are going to be put down under his feet when he comes. So in a way, this is kind of the calm before the storm. 
May it strengthen our resolves, our determination and zeal to remain steadfast in truth and in the tasks that he has for each one of us to do in the time of trouble and chaos ahead. I think we're all going to be praying a lot more fervently, thy kingdom come in the weeks and months ahead. Because I'm pretty sure that it's going to become self-evident that no trust can be placed in any institutions of men. Especially if we want to survive them unmolested. Now we were told in advance that these days of tribulation would be coming. But our God has prepared a place for us. He's prepared for us in advance those things he knows we're going to need for the near future. And that by our fellowship and relationship with one another, the world is going to see that we are his. And that this bond of fellowship that each one of us has together, we have a relationship then with the Father and our elder brother, Jesus Christ. So it's our desire that you all have the best feast you've ever had. And that all of us together will be creating fun, happy, hilarious memories. That you're going to take us right through whatever dark days pop up in the near future. And that all the warmth and love and strength that we enjoy here together will come forth through Yeshua our Savior. Amen. And happy feast.